Our agenda is dominated by Carlton. The Blues made their decision today to part company with their coach. So five days after the season ended, the other shoe dropped for David Teague this morning. Well, this is a mess of the highest order. This is a mess. Yeah. This is a total mess. The collateral is everywhere, yeah. and I think it's going to have a lasting cultural impact on this group. You wonder who's running the footy club at Carlton, and I must say from the outside, Jared, whoever's running that football club has got no idea how to run a football club. I think the President Luke says, I don't think he is meant to be cruel, but I think he's trying to run this footy club like it's a big accounting firm. I wonder what sort of self-sabotage is, is happening at the moment when you project to next year. So what cultural damage are Carlton inflicting on themselves at the moment with those that actually do remain that have, that have been caught up in this, this whole disaster of a situation of their own doing? You've got a football club mired in uncertainty at a time where you need to be certain about where you're going. And that's, that's, and right now, they can't move until such time as they make a decision. So David Teague is a terrific person and a terrific Carlton man. And we part ways with a heavy heart for David Teague. He is truly a terrific Carlton person. David was not able to influence and, and get the best out of, our, out of our playing group. And there are a number of things that factored into, into this decision. We could have done this better, we could have done that better, could have done this better. But overall, do I think that we uh, conducted a, a, a good process and a fair process to get to the answers that we needed to? Yes, I do. Right now, this club will leave no stone unturned to go out there and run a process to find the very best coach. Our expectation, based on the list that we have, we are looking to make finals in 2022. You want to get back in the arena, the cut and thrust. Not many people in life find theoretically what they're good at. I think I've been made a fist of it. I'd like to go through the process. Yep. There's a bit about getting into the war room yourself, having a look underneath the surface. That desire to win a bit of silverware, to, to win one as a senior coach, it, it's been awakened a little bit. Carlton great Mark McClure is with us at the desk. Sellers, welcome. Uh, what for? What are we going to look at? This, uh, this is a interesting... This is the Carlton oh, business. No. Yeah, this I understand is that historic completely. historic Carlton business, isn't it? It doesn't make me feel good either. But uh, it's an unusual day, and uh, David falls on his sword. And uh, to me, um, was he? Did he? Did he deserve it? Well, David is a person who actually wanted to coach his own way. Sometimes he's a little stubborn, and he did it his way and and finished his way. So uh, to me, that's probably probably right. So is the decision justified sits over all of it? So I've, mm. I don't know whether it's the right decision or the wrong decision. I'm yeah. absolutely undecided. His coaching tenure will be one of the hardest to judge in recent times. Yeah. His, fir his first half of a season, he won the job in the work that he did. Mm. He had the COVID-reduced season, sure. 17 games. And then in a year where Carlton erroneously declared the time yeah. for development is over, he hasn't met their markers. What they were right to identify, which is everything that's been commented upon across yeah. the year, is that their defensive flaws in the game, which have been widely identified and mm. scrutinised, mm. prevented them from becoming the team that they wanted to be. Is it a sackable offence? Well, in the, in the second part of this, and uh, is, it, is, it, is it the sole problem of David? No, I don't think so. This is the part that gets me. In the 50 games that he played, he coached, 23 times they had five goals or plus kicked against them in a quarter. Now, to me, that is the footy director, the footy manager and the CEO must come to him and say, after five, hang on, what are we doing here? What is going on here? He says he had no, no support whatsoever. Uh, and I don't know if that's true or not. It's not up to me to f say that. But that was 23 times. Now, then you get 10 times, you've got to go, hang on a second, there's something desperately... And then you go to 15. 23 is outrageous, OK, uh, for mine. And, and if he didn't get any support from the football club in, in that period of time, those blokes should go too. That's the key. So it's the board's right to sack a coach that no longer believes in. Mm. And staggering around in these moments is no good. Yeah. But the notion that it was all David Teague's fault, mm. that, that doesn't wash. So no, it the, doesn't wash it, mate. The, the club embarked on a rigorous review yep. of the football department. And the first 
public utterances. This is not about the coach. It was going to ruthlessly examine the structure and the personnel and the internal workings and then reshape Carlton for the future, the new Carlton. So, root and branch. If ever there was a, a review declared root and branch, this was it. And the only leader to have been identified for the ultimate consequence is David Teague. This looks to me like the same old Carlton way of sacking the coach when it was dressed up as something else. Well, it's easy to sack the coach. You can't get rid of 30 players. It's very difficult. But um, for mine, um, he hadn't performed in the, in the manner. If you give up, come up with 23 times five goals in a, in a game, you know, in a row, I mean, you, you just got to do something about it. And I, and I think that that is, doesn't just land with him. It lands with everybody in that football club. It's, because it takes 15 or 20 people in the football department to run this place. It can't be just David. So, to me, they got rid of a couple of other assistant coaches who, were, you know, it doesn't really matter, but David's the man and he, he's fallen on his sword and he, he knows why he, why he went. I think he, he'd have to know for mine, so uh, we move on. But then, do, do you, you have a look in the next 20, the 20 hang years... Hang on, hang on. Do you think this is a well-managed football department with a good focus no. on people and process, as was declared today? No, I don't think their culture's right at all. I mean, I'm big on culture. I think culture is the most important thing you can have in your, in your club. Uh, when you lose it, you know how, how important it is. Uh, and I think Carlton's lost it, in a sense. Uh, you know, the continual improvement, relationship building is one of the most important things you can have in a footy club. You know, competing, to compete. Some games I didn't see that happen. You know, and then you've got your selflessness. Who, hey, I need to help you. You need to help me, all that sort of stuff. And trust and respect and those sorts of things, standards that you have to keep amongst each other. And, and the, the biggest, the peer pressure is the most important part of that. That's gone, that pen. <laughs> that is. Anyway. So <laughs> Can you do the weather without your pointer? No, I can't. <laughs> anyway, but uh, that's gone, you know, it seemed to have gone. And, and to me, I don't see what their culture is. I'd love to know, and I'd love to, to, to ask the CEO and the, the footy manager and those sort of guys who should know, and the director of footy, what is it? Because I can't see it. Should there be accountability in those pillars of the business? I think so. And in addition to the senior coach? Well, I think everyone's on notice at the moment. Let me tell you, if the review had 23 or 24 uh, parts of it, and they acted on three. It was clearly stated today by the incoming president that that's the last changing of positions. So if you were a Carlton mm. supporter who expected the leadership of the club to be cleaned mm. out, yeah. renewed and the new Carlton to emerge, that didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. And, and did I think that? I thought there should have been some sort of, uh, some sort of action against some of these, some of these people, in a, in a way, to scare them, to get them to go and, and actually work. You know, because that, to me, is an incredible thing. You know, 23 times. You know, if you win half of those, they make the finals in that period of time. So, to me, it's just a, a, a remiss of those people to do that. So, for mine, I, look, Britain, Pagan, Ratton, Malthouse, Bolton, now Teague. In 20 years. How damaging is it for Carlton? So, when you heard the President describe David <laughs> Teague as a terrific Carlton person, yep. I'm not sure you treat terrific Carlton people like that. But in the names yeah. you've read out, th this is how it's always been. I'll give you a bit of mail, Jared. 1979, we win the Premiership. Guess what? Alice Zelenko gets a sack. I think... <laughs> what would you think about that? Is this an unusual club unusual. or not? <laughs> so, for me, this is a, a small story compared to that. That is a massive story when Alice Zelenko got the chop after 79. And to me, I go... And I was devastated. Because the next year, we almost coached ourselves. We had to, you know? So, the whole thing is, was difficult. So, but seriously... That was the most... One of the, one of the unbelievable nights at Dallas Brooks Hall. Full of people. There was cameras everywhere. We, you know, it was all over... Uh, the, the two presidents fighting against each other. And, oh, mate. And that's going to happen again, by the sound of it, with Vince Lozzigano and, uh, and, the, and the board, so... Potential for the EGM. Yeah. What's the circuit breaker, then, Sellers? What, what's, what's, the, what's the change that you, you see that can be made? Because football clubs go through this, and Richmond mm. went through it, 37-year premiership drought, yeah. and... You've seen it. A, a, a connection changed everything. Mm. What, what, is, what is the circuit breaker? Um, well, I just think that the, the, the build of the culture. You got, you've got to start with the players. And they've got to actually dominate what they do in this football club. They should have their say on who they shouldn't play with. I don't want to play with this bloke. He doesn't protect me. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. And once you start to build a bond like that amongst your players, you know what? You're going to go somewhere. And you did that. You guys did that. 
after 16. You, were, you know, I mean, you were up and down and average. And the, and the Father's Day special when the Blues beat you out at, uh, at the MC. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> we, we, we were just here. We were just that and walked it. <laughs> um, so the, the player role is really interesting yeah. in the story that Tom Morris wrote late today, that yeah. there was a group, including Sam Walsh, Harry Mackay, Charlie Curnow, Jacob Wheatering, so the emerging leaders of the club that went to the chief executive to essentially plead for David Teague on Monday that it would be more disruptive to sack the coach now than it would be to stick the course and find the way to rectify what had been going on. So that's... The, the support is there. So they, when a lot of time when coaches get sacked, they say, oh, I'd lost the players. So clearly he hadn't lost the players. Not all of them. Not all of there's them. clearly a portion that spoke against him quite vigorously in the review, and I suspect that goes right to the senior core. Yeah, so, look, I think they'd be hurting at the moment, the, the senior players, whether or not they were in support of Teague or, or not. It's still, it's, it's a big thing to happen at your football club, and it, it can shift a lot of emotion as well. Now, we're in the current climate where players are, have left the game on round 23, gone straight home, and due to restrictions here in Victoria, they may, may not see each other again until, well, when they go back day dot in December. So. It, it, it will be weighing on a lot, a lot of heads. So I, I feel for the, for the Carlton players at the moment. And what do they need in the next coach? So the, the quote was, the best, most experienced coach. And there was no missing no. the phrase most experienced. Yeah. So is this going to be an exhaustive search for Ross Lyon or is this going to be an actual exhaustive search? I'm surprised they haven't spoken to him. I'm surprised that they, they didn't have a, an idea who was going to interview him. I'm surprised on a few things there that unravelled today that seriously don't stand up. So we, they need to get their ducks in a row and get themselves right, because otherwise no one will come. Uh, the one thing I will say out, out of this is that it always breathes... It's, it's a, new, a new era, a new beginning. It gives someone a chance to actually grab a list. And if you look at this, you've got two bookends. You've got Weedering and McKay that are all Australian quality. You've got a gun midfielder in Walsh. You've got Cripps, who's a gun midfielder. Uh, Kerner, who we haven't seen, who we think could be absolutely anything. Of course, they got Saad last year, who's been phenomenal off half-back. The, the nucleus of the team is there. So are the, is the President right when he says we expect to play finals next year? Well, I, I don't know what, what, what they will get up, they can get to, but... There is, there is a good smattering of players there. And if you look back to the Tigers in 2017, we had Rance at fullback, we had Lucky, we had Dustin, we had Cochin, and we had myself. The three, so you have a full forward, a full back, and a couple of gun mids. They've got that. So this can turn around, I reckon, pretty quickly. It can, but you've got to under-promise and over-deliver. Not the other way, because that's what's happened. Sellers, thank yeah. you. Good on you guys. Mark McClure on the night that Carlton sacks their next coach.